Hello again, everybody. It's Harry Boxer, the technical trader at the techtrader.com. It is Tuesday night, and uh, almost a turnaround Tuesday. It wasn't quite that. The market uh, tried to dive in the morning, came back in the afternoon, and closed mixed. Um, so we haven't broken key support yet, but there's signs of um, perhaps a crack in the armor. And we'll just have to see what the um, market wants to give us. For tonight, I'm going to go over some longs and some shorts, about a 10 of each. To show you what's moving both up and down. Now today, ANIP and NIP, which would uh, be uh, ANI Pharmaceuticals, which had recently run from as low as 24 all the way up to today's high of 44. Obviously not um, eager to get into this stock at this moment. Momentum is very strong, but it's overbought. I did want to show you though that a key double top was broken with a breakaway gap and then a run yesterday and a nice follow through today. So if we get a little bit of an additional run up and then a pullback consolidation and retest to that zone, maybe we'll take a look at that on a longer term basis, you can see here's the um, big nice uptrend that it had from July through April, uh, taking it from about five or six bucks all the way up into the 40s, actually high 30s, and then consolidating for about eight or nine months. But the breakout's a key one, and the ultimate target uh, for this one could be all the way up in the 70s and 80s. We'll have to just see what happens in the long term. But for now, uh, key breakout, and you can see that. There is some resistance going way back here, around 32. Um, I'm sorry. Higher than that. Let me get that number for you. Here it is, 44. So uh, we got resistance up in the zone, and let's see what happens. Avenir, of course, acting well. It ran up to 13.83 before backing up, but still up 48 cents at 3.7%. And it's about three quarters of a million shares, a little bit better volume. What I want to see is can this figure get going again? Now you can see the rising channel, lateral resistance here. We put, poked above uh, the, the, this level to get to the highest level this has reached in a while. Um, longer term, this is the highest level since 06, so we're talking about an eight year high. And if it can't, you really can, that level up there was about 18, so that's my next target up around 18. Baba, well, the earnings round came out, the stock dove pre market, then came back again. Nice close though, uh, over 106. It was up four and a quarter, four percent, 67.7 million shares. It was a big day for that stock and a new all-time high. I suspect this may extend, provided the market does. And uh, right now the support is down here, about the 100, 100 and a half range. And so if we get any pullback anywhere near that, that could be a buy for a move up towards 110. Up next is ELN Cats Earthlink. Had a nice day today. You can see the pop breaking across some 50-day moving average and lateral price resistance. And what's next? Well, there's a declining tops line that got just close, it closed right at it. And there is some resistance in Earthlink about four and a quarter and up around the 445 range. I'm expecting that to be tested, maybe even as high as four and three quarters. Beyond that, I have a target around five and a half. But we'll see what happens, what, what kind of fall through we get. 2.4 million was the best volume on an update since uh, beginning of August. So perhaps it's a significant day, but we can't tell it just yet. Swing trade Groupon's having uh, a good time of it. Breakaway gap. You see the moving average is suddenly moving sharply higher. And we may get a pullback at some point, but I think we may hit, hit my swing trade target that I initially gave at around eight and three quarters first. Beyond that, I'm looking at 10, nine and a half times up. Intelliquent. I wanted to point out how strong this has been of late. This is a stock that did very well for us back in here. Then it rolled over. Started back up again. Blew through resistance here, and two day, within two days was through the secondary resistance as well. The next target comes in around 19. And why is that significant? Let's go back a bit. Looking at this, these highs back in 11, 2011, we hit 18, 18 change. So let's just say we're at resistance on a weekly basis and are right in that zone. And if we continue, we could see something in the low 20s. Nice volume in the last four days. Moving on, NLS, after a move up three weeks ago, and then a couple weeks of consolidation holding the moving averages, it popped $1.24 or 9% on 1.15 million. That's the biggest volume since way back here in May. So uh, I'm looking for some more upside and perhaps a run up into this zone near 16 and a half, 17 short term. 
Big day for ODP and indeed. Uh, Office Depot popped, exploded with a breakaway gap, ran through the double top and closed at the high for the day, going away within two cents of it. Uh, the, uh, 633 up 126, that was almost 25%. A whopping 54 million shares traded and it only once in the last couple of years has that exceeded that volume. I'm going to trade at 61 million shares May 6th. But this entire base pattern, you can see the resistance that this has had for the last three years, if taken out, should or could lead to up, upwards of $9. So look for a potential of a swing trade on this one. If we get a follow-up to this, I'll be watching this one the next day or so. QLYS, Qualys. A key breakout here as well. And you can see that for the last year, it's been consolidating what looks like maybe a head and shoulders, but more, more importantly, uh, the breakout occurred a couple days ago. It's been falling through nicely. Today it spiked up on 1.3 million shares and went up 6.5%. Looking at the longer term picture again, there's no overhead resistance here. This is a new all time high. So let's look for a move that takes us in the high 30s, maybe 40. And lastly for, for today is Regulus, which continues to look just phenomenal. After the breakaway gap and the four day run up, it's gone sideways and consolidated for several sessions as the volume dissipated and the stock is forming a beautiful flag in here. If it gets above the uh, 20, 70, 80 range, we can see the spike into the mid 20s, maybe even high 20s. Stay tuned, this could get interesting. Now, a quick look at some of the box of shorts. Starting alphabetically with Core Laboratories. Now, I've been talking about this for weeks and actually months when it broke down hard and formed this big bear coil. Broke down, rising wedge, and then dropped it from 160 down to 120 and change before bouncing. Today down 357, and if it's going to retest this level and or take it out, we could see a spike down into the 11020 zone. COH Coach, I've been showing you this rising wedge, lateral price resistance, and the new declining channel that's underway. Looks like a one, two, three, four, and maybe a fifth wave could really start to accelerate if we take out the, this level. And today's low um, of uh, 32.92 is actually a new low that took out these three lows in the air. Well, let's see if we got any downside follow through. As you can see, we could get real ugly down here, maybe even into the mid to high 20s. EMES. Well, the rollover is hard and came down for about two weeks in a row every day. It bounced sharply on short covering, in my opinion, and then rolled over after double topping. Today it broke support, dropping another 659 or 7.5%. Technical is very negative. I'm looking for at least a retest of 69.5-70. That could be about a 10, 12 point sh short here. If we get below that, it could get ugly. HCLP is another example, similar pattern. Big drop, big pop, failed right at the declining top line and 50 p removing average. And rolled over today, dropping 322 or 7.3% on nearly a million. Again, in the case of high crush, 39 was support. Today's high, low of 39.69 before bouncing. But it should have take that out. We could see 34.35. Las Vegas, been in a downtrend for a bit. This topping pattern was broken here. A little bear wedge formed. Came down to the bottom of the channel, bounced to resistance near the gap, pulled over, today dropping 270 at 4.33%. Looks to me like there's a possibility we could see mid 50s on this, maybe even high 40s. In US, dropped $1.85 or 3.5% today, and although it did break out slightly here and the moving averages cross over, I'll be watching this for failure. And once it gets below 47, it could start to accelerate lower to retest 40 or worse. Ultimately, though, could see 33.35. TEX down $1.31 or 4.5% today, been in a downtrend for a bit, broke here, rally back to resistance, this falling flag, so to speak, very weak, it dropped from 32 down to 25 and a half, 26 range, and then bounced. Failed there, rolled over, snapped back today. It looks like this double bottom, if taken out near 26, could be disastrous for this stock. Tupperware, a swing trade of ours, uh, up in that zone, has worked out very well. Snap back here. Got hammered there. Take a look at what's formed in here. A little bear flag, and today rolled over uh, less, only 1%. But if this accelerates below here and takes out 61.5 or so, you can see high 50s, mid 50s. 
WLK, major rollover, big drop, strong snapback, and then a cave, flag, look at that pop today, down 43, 6.8%, and more importantly, it broke through this support. The next support may be tested earliest, as early as tomorrow, and that's down about the 61 range. You get below that, it could be very, very ugly. And lastly is Yelp, which I put out as a swing short. It broke, snapped back to resistance, and starting to pull back again. Pretty steep trend on the way. If it continues, we should see a retest of 49.50. That's my next target. That's it on the long and short side of it, folks. Going to be an interesting day tomorrow. Be careful out there, and this is HB saying good evening.